composting is an integral part of gardening and has been carried out for many generations and that has led to a lot of composting myths. What can't you add? What should you add? What are the right ratios? Do you need to turn it? Do you have to follow specific recipes? In this program, I'm going to discuss all of those things as well as several other myths. We're going to have a look at 27 composting myths in rapid succession. The myth. Composting is complicated. There is no right or wrong way to compost. You can do hot compost. You can do cold compost. You can do what most gardeners do and do something halfway in the middle. We could call that warm composting. You can simply pile stuff up and wait for it to decompose. You can also use my method, the cut and drop method, where I just go in the garden and cut things and drop them, and I don't even use a bin. There are things you can do to speed up composting. You can cut the material into smaller pieces. You can get the CN ratio just right. You can add some extra nitrogen. You can turn it regularly. Or you can do absolutely none of those things and you'll still get compost. Think about nature. The leaves fall in the forest in the fall and they compost. Nobody adds extra greens to those browns. Nobody turns the material. Nature just happens over time and the material decomposes. Composting is that simple. And in fact, if you wanted to stop the composting, that decomposition process, you can't. Don't believe all those composting myths you read about. Now here's 26 more on the myth. You need the right ratio of browns and greens. This is really two composting myths in one. First of all, you don't need the right ratio of material. Pile up any kind of organic matter and it decomposes. Nobody adds greens to the fall leaves in the forest. Having a good ratio will speed up the process because microbes grow best with a ratio of carbon to nitrogen of about 25-1. The second myth is that it's not about a green and brown ratio. It is a carbon to nitrogen ratio. You can learn more about this at GardenMyths.com. Look for an article called How to Compost Browns and Greens. The Myth. Compost bins need to be in sun. Composting happens faster when the pile heats up. Sun will help with this, especially in colder climates, but it does not require sun. In hot climates, a compost pile in full sun might dry out too fast, which slows down the process. The myth. Compost tumblers make compost in two weeks. Manufacturers of compost tumblers claim that you can make compost in two weeks, and that is just nonsense. Compost tumblers do work, but not as well as a large compost pile. As microbes decompose organic matter, they produce heat. A large pile helps to hold in that heat, speeding up composting even more. The volume of that pile, which is usually 3 by 3 by 3 by 3 feet in size, is necessary to produce a hot composting process. Tumblers can't match that. The myth. Compost is acidic and will affect soil pH. Finished compost is nearly neutral, but the final pH depends on the material that went into it. Homemade compost usually has a pH between 7 and 7.5. It will not affect the pH of your soil unless you garden on pure sand and then the effect will be minimal. Don't add lime to compost to neutralize pH. The myth. Compost stinks. The composting process has almost no smell. Fresh kitchen scraps do smell a bit for a day or two, but if you dig them into the pile, you won't notice the smell. Don't add too much high nitrogen material or meat, and you will have almost no smell. The myth. Compost is finished in a few months. This is a very common myth. Composting takes as long as it takes. In colder climates, it takes much longer than in warm ones. A small pile or one with a high carbon ratio will also compost slower. A simple pile of fall leaves can take more than a year. Even when you think it is finished, it's not. To our eyes it looks fully decomposed because we can no longer see large objects like banana peels, but on a micro scale it still consists of pieces of undecomposed material, which is actually a good thing. So called finished compost will continue to decompose for another five years. As it does, it slowly releases nutrients for your plants. Think of it as a slow feed fertilizer. The myth. Composting attracts flies and rodents. This is rarely a problem. Sure, a rodent might come and get a slice of bread, and if you add a lot of rotten peaches, you will probably get fruit flies. As the pile decomposes, all of these will either leave or be killed. A few flies and rodents are part of nature. 
A compost pile does not breed more of these pests. The myth, you should add compost accelerators and compost starters. These products normally contain a nitrogen source or a microbes or both. They are not needed. Adding extra microbes to get the composting process started is completely unnecessary. Everything you add to the compost pile is covered in microbes. You can't see them, but they are there. You don't need to add more. Adding nitrogen can be beneficial if your carbon to nitrogen ratio is high, in which case extra nitrogen will speed up the process. But it is not needed, and nitrogen fertilizer is usually much cheaper than special so-called compost starters. Peeing on it a couple of times will do the trick too. The myth. Don't compost cooked food. I can't image how this myth started. Cooked food contains about the same material as uncooked food. Sure, cooking causes some minor chemical changes, but most of the molecules are the same in both. It is all organic material and it all decomposes. Some people believe animals are attracted to cooked food more than uncooked and so it should not be used, but I have never seen any scientific evidence to support this theory. If you find some, let me know. On the myth, don't compost meat you can compost meat. What you need to understand is that it decomposes slowly, attracts animals, and can smell. For these reasons, some people don't add it to a compost pile. The myth. Don't compost cheese and fat. These can also be composted, but they compost slowly and can attract animals. Unless you do hot composting, it is probably best to leave these out if you have large amounts. But who throws away a big pile of cheese? Alternatively, you can bury them in soil and let them compost there. The myth. Don't compost starchy food. Starchy food like bread and noodles contain a lot of carbohydrates, which are long chains of sugars. Sugars are the favorite food of microbes, so there is absolutely no reason not to add them to the compost pile. Some people are concerned that rodents like bread, so what? They might come and find it in the compost pile. They eat it, digest it, and deposit their poop in the garden. The bread is just composted faster that way. Moldy bread or other food stuff can be harmful to dogs, so keep pets out the pile. For the myth, don't add onions or citrus. Citrus peels decompose slower than some other things, but they do decompose. The small amount that a normal home produces is not a problem. I can't imagine why anyone would think there is a problem with onions. Onions do have a low pH around 5.5, but that won't affect the pH of a compost. Onions do contain more sulfur than other organic material, but not enough to affect composting, and it is a macronutrient that plants need. The myth. Add paper and cardboard to compost. Paper and cardboard are made from organic material, but the cellulose in these products is difficult for microbes to digest, resulting in very slow decomposition. They also have a very high carbon ratio exacerbating the problem, but in most cases, paper products are mostly intact at the end of the composting process. Unless you have a lot of ni-nitrogen material, it is better to leave it out. Besides, there is no nutritive value in paper. I have a number of other composting myths I want to tell you about, but you're probably sitting there wondering, well, He's telling me what not to do, but how do I make good compost? What should I be doing? Well, the answers to all those questions are in my book, Compost Science for Gardeners. You can get more information about that book on Amazon or my blog, gardenmist.com, or in the description below. Now back to more myths. The myth. Don't add weeds to your compost pile. Weeds are just another kind of plant. There's no reason why you can't compost your weeds. But there are some special cases to consider. If you gather your weeds at the right time, they won't have flowered and they won't have seeds on them. Almost all of those weeds can be thrown in the compost pile and they'll compost perfectly fine and you won't spread weeds around. Now if you wait too long and the weeds have seeds on them, then those seeds might survive composting. However, if you do hot composting, that generally kills the seeds as well. Colder composting doesn't. Now, there are some weeds you should treat differently. Things like Canada thistle and bindweed, which have these large rhizomes that travel along the ground. Don't put those in your compost pile. What I do with those is I just throw them on a driveway or a patio, somewhere where they'll bake in the sun. Leave them there for three or four days. Once they're really good and dry, you could put them in the compost pile or do what I do, just leave them there and they'll decompose where you put them. Nature will make them disappear. The myth. 
add tea bags to the compost pile. The tea inside tea bags will easily compost, but the bags are mostly made from a plastic or paper material. Even when labeled as biodegradable, they don't decompose in a garden compost pile, even a hot one. Either don't add them or pick them out at the end of the process. On the myth, don't compost poop. Human and pet poop is really no different from farm animal poop. It all composts and adds much needed nitrogen to the pile. There is a concern about spreading human infectious diseases. The risk is extremely low if the compost is used on ornamental beds and only slightly higher in vegetable gardens. Household poop from you or your pets is perfectly safe since you have already been exposed to it. The myth. Don't add diseased plant material. Most home compost is made using yard waste. By fall, every piece of it is covered with disease organisms. If you only use disease-free material, you could never make compost. Don't worry about diseased yard waste. Don't use material infected with a virus, but that is uncommon in gardens. From the myth, don't use pine needles because they don't decompose. What happens to pine needles in nature? Do they pile up higher and higher each year? Have you seen 50-foot piles of pine needles in the woods? Pine needles must decompose since the ground under pine trees only has a thin layer of needles. If they decompose in nature, they will decompose in a compost pile. Sometimes myths can be debunked with simple logic. Pine needles contain chemicals that can be difficult to decompose, but you can use compost with them half decomposed. Some people are concerned that the acidity of pine needles will interfere with the composting process, but this is another myth. They are not acidic once they are on the ground and only slightly acidic when green. The myth, add eggshells to the compost pile. There is nothing wrong with adding eggshells, but they don't decompose. They really don't add much value to the garden. The myth. Don't add grass clippings. Grass clippings should be mulched and stay right on your lawn, but if you remove them, they can be added to the compost pile. If you create a big pile of green grass clippings, they will start to stink. Grass clippings are high in nitrogen and moisture, which results in anaerobic decomposition, and that stinks. The solution is simple. Let them dry for a day or two before piling them up, or mix them well with a high carbon source like dry leaves. There is one possible reason not to use grass clippings. If they have been treated with certain herbicides, the chemical may survive the composting process. It won't affect mature plants, but it may harm seedlings. Such grass can be composted, but don't use it around seedlings. The myth. Earthworms speed up a compost pile. There is a process called vermicomposting, which uses worms to decompose organic matter, but that is something completely different. Adding worms to a cold compost process might help a bit, although they will probably just crawl out of the pile into the soil. Adding them to a warm compost pile will kill them. Earthworms are not part of the composting process. Granted, they usually show up near the end of the process because they use the compost as food, and I think that is why people think they are important during composting. The myth. Use Coca-Cola in your compost pile. The internet is full of secret concoctions to make your compost work fast and hotter. Most of them don't work, or they have very little effect on the process. Another very common recommendation is to add molasses to your compost pile. Well, both molasses and Coca-Cola have sugar in them. Sugar is a food that microbes use, so they will feed the microbes, but we want the microbes to be digesting the material in the compost pile, not the sugar that you've added. Besides, the amount you're adding is so small it really doesn't make any difference. You do not need to add a secret sauce. The myth. You can add compostable plastic to your compost pile. Sounds like you should be able to do that. The plastic is labeled as compostable, but it's really not. Compostable plastic will not decompose in the compost piles gardeners make. In fact, except for a very few facilities in North America, most municipal composting facilities also can't take the plastic. Their processes aren't hot enough and aren't long enough. Compostable plastic is compostable according to the official definition, but that definition does not include home composting piles. That label, compostable plastic, is a huge greenwashing effort by companies. Almost all of it ends up in landfill.
there you have it, my 27 composting myths. Now, if you'd like to learn more about composting, have a look at this video right here. It has some excerpts from my book, Composting Science for Gardeners. And if you're interested in more myths, look at these videos right here. They're going to save you a lot of time and money in the garden. Happy garden.